Okay, so before I join up uh, the two side pieces for the gusset and the bottom piece for the gusset, um, I'm going to make a change. So these are the measurements that I was told to cut from the tutorial. Um, and we'll put the side pieces aside. Um, but here is the back and front piece for the lining. And the back and front piece for the lining along the bottom edge is 10 and a half inches, whereas the <coughs> bottom piece is actually 11 inches. So it's a half an inch bigger as per requested. Um, but the change I'm going to make is I'm going to cut it to fit. So I'm going to cut it 10 and a half inches so they're going to match. So I'm going to line it up like this. You can see I've marked off this side and I'm just going to cut that and remove it and then I'm going to piece them all together. Okay, so we're going to start assembling the lining. So this is my bottom piece and these are the two side pieces and what we're going to do is we're going to basically sew the ends together. So this is my bottom piece and a side piece and I'm going to put them pretty sides together and I'm just going to sew the ends together. So I just match it up and you can just throw two pins in there to hold it. And so that's my bottom piece pinned to a side and then I'm going to also set this one up. So this is my bottom piece and the other side laying it pretty sides together. Just match it up. It's my daughter singing in the background a little bit there. So we're matching up those sides. Throw two pins in there. Make sure you match them up. Match it up. Okay. And then we're going to go on the sewing machine and we're going to do a quarter inch seam. All of the instructions are asking for a quarter inch seam. If you read the instructions, that's what she's requesting. So just a quarter inch seam and we're going to end up making one large strip. So that's a side piece, the bottom piece, and the side piece. Okay, so I'm getting ready to sew the gusset to uh, the lining back and front pieces. So what I want you to notice is that here's the seam after I've joined them together. And after you're done pressing it, I want you to line up the seam. It's just folded down this way with the edge of the fabric. So if you see this corner right here, that edge of the fabric lines up with that corner right there. So you're going to start from here, pinning up as you go, and there will be some excess up here. And I have to admit, I'm thinking that probably isn't necessary either, just like I trimmed the bottom piece, but we'll leave it for now. We'll see if there's a reason for it to be there. So, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew down this edge, and I'll show you how to pivot it so that you can lay this piece across that way. Okay, so I'm getting ready to stitch down this as a quarter inch from the edge. So I'm just lining up my presser foot because I've checked with my seam gauge that that is indeed a quarter of an inch. I'm going to do my back tack to begin. And so I'm just going to sew down. In the instructions, she says, once you get a quarter of an inch away, and we can tell what the quarter of an inch is going to be because that's where those stitch lines are because we sewed a quarter of an inch last time when we joined the gusset pieces together. So if you want to use your hand wheel to ease yourself right to that quarter, go ahead and do so. Leave your needle down, raise your presser foot up, and then what she says to do is to swing this gusset piece to the left, okay? So if you were to pivot everything over in front of you, because we're going to be sewing down this way next, you can see that you just have to tuck this stuff out of the way and realign the fabric, because we're going to be sewing down this way. And if you get a bit of a rumple there, what I like to do is grab my um, seam ripper or something small like that and just use it to I don't know if you can see in here, but just use it to uh, adjust and, and flatten the fabric there so that it's mm, kind of lying as flat as it can be. Mm. 
think as good as I'm going to get that. Okay. Make sure this is tucked out of the way. Everything's lined up. And I'm just going to continue by putting my presser foot down. Okay. And continue with a quarter of an inch along this way. If I get a bit of a rumple, just lift my foot and drop it again. So now I'm sewing along the bottom of the bag. And this seam, again, is where I've attached those two pieces for the bottom of my bag. And I'm just going to make sure, if you can look over here, I'm just going to make sure that the fabric from my bottom piece lines up with the edge of the fabric there. And I'm going to hold those two together. If you need to pin, go ahead and do so. I'm just going to line it up and be very careful. So here is the box that we've created so far. I've sewn the side gussets and the bottom gusset and the other side gusset down. And you can see that it's making some nice corners where the seam along here between the side and bottom, the corner matches up with the corner of uh, the back piece here. So I'm going to piece my front uh, put my front piece on and what I'm going to do is same thing as before I'm going to match up the edge of my fabric with the edge of the fabric um, from the side piece uh, gusset and I'm going to start from there put my first pin down and pin all the way along till the top Okay, until I got to the top. And I'm going to sew it the same way as I did before, um, going along at a quarter, leaving, uh, going till I, I reach a quarter of an inch away, leave my needle down, and swinging things around, and um, putting my presser foot back down, and continuing to sew. And uh, it comes together just the way it did when you did, uh, when you're putting the gussets on the first time. Uh, I think the only thing to keep in mind is uh, to just make sure everything stays very straight and tucked out of the way. So always double check that you're not sewing over anything uh, underneath. Okay, so just kind of pull it out of the way like this when you're sewing so that way these pieces are free and clear of the needle. And that's about it. Sew it the same way as you did before. I did the outside as well um, and I've already joined it all together. I have to say I'm really liking the way these gussets make this bag look. Um, so you can, let me see if I can get my hand in here. So now the corners are two inches. Okay, and uh, so this is the base of my bag. And I'm thinking I might actually consider putting a piece of uh, Peltex in here that's just a little shy of two inches wide uh, by the total measurement from this seam to that seam. Just a little shy of that as well. And ironing that in to just give some extra rigidity. But this is only if you want to. That's an added thing. It's again not on the pattern. Okay, so I'm sewing the... Um back piece onto the front end gusset pieces and I just want to show you I'm coming down I just sewed along one side and now I'm getting this is going to be the bottom side here and I need to attach them together and I just want to show you um, how to make sure you're not going to be sewing over top of anything so this is the bottom gusset piece here and I'm just going to make sure that it's in front of me and there's the uh, end of the top panel piece and you see how that corner of the fabric underneath is matching up with the one on top that's perfect just as it should be and this is sticking out in front so everything's going to be out of the way and I'm just going to one hand sew here again so it might be a little unsteady sorry I'm going to sew down until I get a quarter of an inch away Okay, raise my presser foot. I'm gonna, I can even lift it and see if I've, I've done that well. And it's a quarter of an inch away. Yes, it is. 
and then just like before you're going to swing things to the left bring them around and line them back up again let me just shut this off and I'll realign it and I'll show you what I mean well maybe I can do it with one bringing this over bringing it over like that and remember I was talking about uh, using a little tool in case you get a, a fold there. Uh, this is what I was meaning right there. I, I need to, to pull that out and straighten it in the back. And if I don't uh, want to use a seam ripper because that's a little dangerous, I can even just use a little, uh, little pin. So I've kept one here so I can do that. I'm just going to try to show you what I mean. Just kind of pick and move that fold there just out of the way. Now it's all lying nice and flat. I can put my presser foot back down. Realign these again. I can pin it if I want to. And uh, I'm just going to throw a couple stitches in here. It'll make it a little easier. Okay and then keep aligning it as I go as I sew down that other side. Now I had said that I was thinking about maybe adding a stabilizer to the bottom of the bag just to firm it up and so I'm going to do that now. Um, this is an extra step, it's not on the tutorial, um, but I just think it's going to give really great stability to the bottom of the bag. So the bottom of my bag is 2 inches by 10 inches. So I've cut my piece of um, Peltex or Ultra Firm Stabilizer, 9 and a quarter by 1 and 3 quarter, sorry, 9 and 3 quarters by 1 and 3 quarters. And the reason for that is that way it'll fit kind of nicely in between the seams. Um, so what I purchased is this, it's called uh, Pellon 71F, it's a single sided fusible ultra firm stabilizer. So the ultra firm means that this is really like stiff and rigid and the single sided fusible means that on this side there's no glue but on this side it's kind of rough and there's uh, little dots of glue here. So all I'll have to do is place this here and give it a firm press. Uh, and I'll probably also want to use a pressing cloth just to protect it and um, what it says to do is to press firmly for five to ten seconds and I'm going to repeat that in an overlapping fashion till that's all fused to the bottom of my bag and that's all it takes to add that to it. So I'm just going to show you how I, I've uh, placed my Peltex on the bottom of the bag. Um, I've had to kind of tuck it under this seam, which is fine, uh, because I did cut a little bit smaller. It fits really nicely in there. And I've just placed a uh, all-metal pin there, went along, another pin, another pin, and you can see that it's lining up with the bottom of the bag on the other side inside the, the seam allowance there. Um, I've pinned it with an all-metal pin, and the reason why I did that instead of using our favorite kind of uh, ball headed pins here is because this way I'm going to be able to put the iron on it and press it in place and I can't melt the plastic that's on these ones. You can purchase glass headed pins. Uh, they cost a little bit more money but these are plastic and they will melt so I'm not going to use them. Um, if you only have plastic headed ball pins. What you could do is place one here to hold this end and place one there to hold that end and then do the first presses in the center so that it won't shift and move around and then remove these and then press one end and press the other so that way you can make sure that your placement is exactly where you want it. We're just going to look at the process of it. So I've pinned the, the bottom of the bag with the Peltex on it and what I'm going to do is use a Taylor's ham. Now this one's my favorite to use because um, it has like a little pocket so I can hold it in place and it's so I'm not kind of doing this and running the risk of maybe burning my finger. I have to say that uh, you could probably make something like this just kind of sew it together and make sure that you have an extra layer here so that you can slip it in and stuff it all full of maybe flannel or some kind of batting like that, nice and firm, and then stitch it across the bottom, because these things are handy. Anyway, so I'm going to insert the Taylor's ham into the bag. 
and I'm going to pr place a pressing cloth and if you don't have a pressing cloth, really a pressing cloth can be an old uh, pillowcase or something like that on top and use my iron and I'm going to press it in place. But what's a really nice trick is to use like a little bit of spray, like a, this is just water, and give it a light misting and then use your iron and your iron you just want to kind of press it and hold it uh, and again that's for 15 seconds um, the water is going to obviously evaporate from the area that the iron has been on and you're going to be able to see where you've been and where you need to press next Okay. So I'm, I'm doing this just to kind of tack this side in place. This is not probably going to hold most of it because this Peltex being so thick um, almost acts a bit of um, like a thermal barrier and doesn't let the heat go 100% all the way through. But it does kind of help tack it uh, in some places so that it's getting kind of firm. What I'm going to do now though is I'm going to turn this around. So it's a good side of my fabric out. Okay, you can already see how that Peltex is giving some stability and really professional look to the bottom of the bag. Put my tailor's hand back inside again. If you don't have a tailor's hand and you don't want to make it, you can even use like a wadded up um, um, dishcloth. Uh, just be really careful not to burn yourself. So you're going to put your Taylor's ham on the inside. Now I could press like this, but because we're going to be holding it for 10 to 15 seconds, I don't want to scorch my fabric. Scorching just means like a light burn. So I'm going to make sure to use my pressing cloth again, or like a dish towel or a pillowcase. And this time I'm going to start on one side and I'm going to press and make my way over till I get to the other side. I'm going to turn my ham around so I get this other corner. And again, just kind of holding it. Um, you don't need to move your iron around too much because um, it's really the pressure and the heat. The reason why I move mine a little bit is I've got a lot of holes on the bottom of mine and I end up getting like a couple spots that don't end up uh, getting the press. The other nice thing about the pressing cloth, it's going to avoid scorching, but also those metal pins aren't going to scratch the base plate on my iron because it's being protected by the cloth. And that is how you do it. So you're going to go through all of those pieces I already have, and then if there's any wrinkles like this, you can use your ham to just kind of iron them out. But when it's all done, you can see the bottom of my bag is a lot firmer and I'm going to take those pins out and I'm ready to insert the lining inside the bag.